chastisement of the Lord. God has sent severe mercy to mankind through his chastisements. The thing that most people don't understand about God is that he is God is not all love. You just need to read the Bible to figure that out. Those people that turn against God, God turns against them. And it's just a matter of time before God brings judgment on the rest of the world who has turned their heart against God. The message of the last day's prophet, whom everybody calls Elijah, will be repent, turn from your evil ways, before tribulation falls upon your head. That will be the major part of his ministry. And not only will be he, um, he will be able to uh, speak those words, he'll be able to perform and show that God is able to do these things in which he says that God will be able to do. Flesh, our flesh, is the enemy of God. There is no such thing as God showing up in a place where his enemy dwells. The flesh has to be subdued, has to be brought under control before God will show up on the scene. That's why Jesus in the, went into the garden and he fasted. Or he went out in the desert, he fasted. He went into the garden and he prayed until his blood became as great, or his sweat became as great drops of blood. His flesh had to be subdued. He carried an enemy around with him. Yes, he was Jesus, the Son of God, but he also is the Son of Man. Whatever he was, he still is, by the way. <laughs> Amen. Whatever he was, he still is. Listen, church. Revival's not coming until somebody cares enough to get the flesh under control. God's not going to show up. He just will not show up. There's a couple of places in the Bible to use for good examples. The maniac of Gadara, where Jesus cast the spirit out of this man. Uh, Jesus showed up, and he see the Lord had his flesh under control. He went down and he he cast the spirit out of that man who uh, was was able to break chains from off his arms. But there was no such thing. Jesus said, this kind come only through much prayer and fasting. That's why uh, Jesus had his flesh under control, so he could command in the spirit world. When we bring revival, we have to bring it through the same such manner as what Christ brought revival in the same way. There is no other way to bring revival. People, uh, I've heard preachers say, well, men have to bring it. Men have to want it. The church has to want it. No, the church don't have to. If it was up for the church to want it, we would never have revival. Good example is Azusa Street. Revival started out there from California and it spread all across this land. And the, the people out here had nothing to do with Azusa Street, you know. That revival happened back in the 80s when uh, it, just, it just spread. God, he, he brings his spirit down and it, and it spreads like a fire. <laughs> but there has to be somebody who is willing to get their flesh under control before God will send his spirit. The Bible talks about uh, in Ephesians, put on the whole armor of God. Well, putting on the whole armor of God consists of preparation of the gospel of peace. You have to put that armor, the helmet of salvation. Listen, you have to put on this helmet of salvation. Somebody has to put on the helmet. God don't come down here and put the helmet on for you. He already made preparations for that helmet. But you have to put that helmet on. You have to guard your mind with that helmet, with the uh, with the helmet of salvation, 
that that uh, causes us to have blinders that we only look one direction. Breastplate of righteousness. Oh man, I'll tell you what. Now that's a biggie right there. And it all has to do with what you decide to do in your heart. With what you decide to do. What you you command. I said something the other day about we are the literal sons of God. Psalms 82 6. We are the literal sons of God. We are not just a, a, a revamped human as Adam was in the in the beginning. We are the sons of God. Jesus commanded the wind and the rain and the waves. And we as the, as the children of, of God can do this can do the same thing. We have we have the potential of our Father, so therefore we should be able to command the wind. But you're not going to command anything, see, because God's not going to show up until you get your flesh under control. You know, and I should put a big old mirror right behind this camera because, see, I'm preaching myself as well. Have I ever achieved this? Yes, I did. I achieved this before, and it seems like God brings it in, in seasons in our life. You, you won't keep your flesh under control very long. But you can. That's a lie of the devil when he says you can't control your flesh. You can control your flesh through prayer and fasting. Through much prayer, much fasting, you can cause the miraculous to happen. You can command, you can cause the devil to shake in his boots by just walking into the room. The maniac of Kedera, he told Jesus, when he was afar off, he began to yell at him. O oh, thou son of God, why have you come to torment me before my time? Church, we have power in God. We're so discouraged because we're not tapping in. Because it's relentless. Our flesh is relentless. The enemy of God is relentless. We continuously fall before our, uh, our fleshly desires and our wants and our greeds and why isn't this happening? Why isn't this going like I planned? Well, yeah, I planned on being a millionaire by the time I was 30, <laughs> you know. But I forgot to add in the cost of what it would do that. The total cost. I could figure out the money, but I forgot all the other stuff, the living that I would have to make along the way, along my family and cars and houses and, and everything, you know. Same thing with God. Count the cost. Make a plan. Subdue your flesh. This is a picture of what God means by subdue. Crucif crucify. When you're on that cross, pick up your cross daily, Jesus said. This is what he's talking about. Subdue that flesh in this manner. When you're on the cross, you're, you can't do nothing with his arms. You can't do nothing with his feet. You can barely breathe. You, if you can get yourself up high enough, to take a breath, come back down on that. The only thing you're going to do, it talks about, the only thing, is, it, see, it just gives your flesh enough room to live. Nothing else. Nothing else. Subdue that flesh in that manner. Even like Jesus said, crucify that flesh. Subdue it. Then God will show up. Did he show up when Jesus, oh man, <laughs> he saved the world. He saved the world. Amen. God bless. Thank you for joining. i got to cut this off. I could preach for an hour today. <laughs> Join me again next time. Another great message right here across in the middle ministry.